Well, hello everybody out there in Cyberland. It's been a while since I have uh, recorded a video blog, so I thought now is the time as I'm about to release a new EP. Uh, the EP I'm about to release is called The White EP, and it's the first of three um, EPs that I'll be releasing throughout the year. When I when I released my last album, Dr. Dream and the Imaginary Pop Cabaret, I started writing again and discovered that all of my songs were very diverse and seemed to fit into three distinct styles. And um, I spent a really long time trying to solidify exactly what I wanted to achieve um, with my next release and try to streamline all of the songs and the arrangements I was, you know, conjuring up in my head. Um, in the end, it didn't work. It was all too difficult, and I decided to, you know, release three different bodies of work. The white EP, um, and all of the EPs actually, well the keyboard parts, piano parts, were recorded at Airlock Studios in Brisbane. And um, the incredible Franz Arp, my long-term collaborator, amongst other things, um, aka Ben Stewart, recorded and um, co-produced and is mixing one of the EPs in another room, this house, as we speak. Um, so that was that was brilliant as always. The white EP um, features songs on a Wurlitzer. I've never played a Wurlitzer before, and this particular instrument was incredibly old and maybe a little flawed. I'm not really sure, but it was really kind of buzzy and crackly, and, uh, which I really loved. And gives it this very old school um, feel, very raw, um, and very different to anything I've ever done. Uh, the songs are mostly slower, off kilter um, ballads. And before starting this project, or before I, you know, decided on a, a theme, I did a lot of um, research into colours and their meanings and symbology. And I, I also did some sort of, sort of research into uh, synesthe synesthesia, which is, um, I guess, when two of your senses kind of get a bit like crossed or something like that, it's, it's a difficult thing to describe and no no one can really make up any rules about exactly what it is because everybody's completely different. Um, as an example, what it is is uh, some people may see the letter P and always associate that with the colour red. Or some people, um, when they hear my name, Emma may always associate that with the colour brown. Um, other people may hear a song and it will make them taste uh, an orange. And that was one of the the, the examples that actually um, yeah happened for one of my songs. My cousin said she she tasted orange and saw this textured orange and yellow um, print. So. Um, I was kind of hoping that everybody I sent the songs to, everybody with synesthesia, would instantly say, oh, yes, I hear, I see white when I would send them the, the songs from the white EP, or I, I, I really feel and see, see red when I sent them the songs from the red EP. Even though I knew that that really wasn't going to happen, I somehow hoped it would. Um, and in the end, 
these color choices are, are colors that uh, reflect how I see and feel um, these songs of mine. Um, mixed with a little bit of symbology research as well. So the YDP has uh, songs that are uh, about rebirth, about um, awakening, about death, uh, purity, wedding. So it's kind of combining the, the Western and Eastern cultural references. So Eastern culture um, associates white with death and funerals and Western culture associates white with weddings and purity and angels and there's all of the above uh, um, on the white EP in various songs. But the show must go on and on otherwise when the Well, Circus Comes to Town is a song that I wrote last year in a dark place. I'd been doing the same thing for seven years and I was starting to question why and I was starting to wonder if it was making me happy or question why I was so unhappy. And... Uh, at the time, I felt like a crazy ringleader uh, of this, this circus. But I felt like the circus didn't need me anymore. And uh, my whole life had been um, dedicated to this. And suddenly I didn't know what to do. And so... Yeah, that's that's how that song came came about. Last night I stole a baby in my dreams. I held him so tightly, but he ran away from me. When I came, we were blending. Last night I had a hundred dreams is a song that I wrote in the height of uh, jet lag period. <laughs> I just returned from New York and when I have jet lag I tend to dream very vividly and violently. Um, I have many dreams um, consecutively through the night and it feels like I've dreamt you know thousands of dreams and of course I can't remember all of them but uh, a couple I, I was able to articulate in the morning after this one night and those are the dreams that ended uh, up in this song. And strangely enough, they had a common thread, a theme about um, isolation. So it's a little dark. I was kind of informed by some of my jazz training uh, or past experiences. Um, when I wrote this song, I'd recently uh, performed a gig at the Jazz Club in Brisbane with some phenomenal uh, jazz players including Steve and Helen Russell and John Hoffman and many others um, and I I was really inspired to uh, to write in uh, a jazzy kind of way a song that I wrote about my friend Phoebe. I met Phoebe when I was working at a dance school in Surrey Hill and she would come in as a tango student and I would take her $16 and I would smile <laughs> and uh, I remember at our Christmas party I noticed that she had extraordinary legs and one of the only things I said to her really was you have amazing legs. 
And um, from that moment, we kind of uh, struck up a friendship. Uh, and it wasn't until I moved back to Brisbane that we really um, got to know each other online through Skype. And she became my personal assistant. And we've been friends ever since. Um, she's no longer my personal assistant, but she's um, doing amazing things. However, about four months ago, her partner, um, the love of her life, uh, a lovely man called Gus, um, tragically passed away in Thailand. And as soon as I heard the news, I got onto uh, my keyboard and in about 15 or 20 minutes I wrote to you with her whole heart. Beautiful Lies has a, a fun little story attached. One of my other jobs um, on and off has been to um, coach and teach and guide people who are interested in music and performance um, and in songwriting. And I have been so blessed in my life to have a, a young uh, a young lady by the name of Indigo Kane, um, you know, become one of my students and then become like a little sister to me. During one of our songwriting jams, we made up this song called Beautiful Lies. I'd sing a line, I'd, you know, come up with a, a part of the riff, um, some chords, and she'd sing a line and come up with some lyrics and we went back and forth until we had a, what seemed like a song and um, and then we figured out that this song was probably about uh, a wedding on the eve of the apocalypse and uh, that's how Beautiful Lives was born and she features on the track. So... For all of you out there who um, would like to know more about my music, please visit my website, www.emmadeen.com. I'm from Brisbane, Australia, but I'm about to embark on a, on a uh, change of scenery and move to New York, and I'm truly excited about that. Um, but I really hope that you keep in touch, so join my mailing list. Add me on Twitter, Emma Dean Music like me on Facebook, which is also facebook.com slash Music, And um, I look forward to sharing my, my new work with you.